Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. My name is Heidi Roth, and I'm a registered dietitian, and I'm so glad that you could join me here today for our heart healthy eating cooking demo. Um, today, we're going to be making a recipe that I've been making for a long, long time. Um, I think I got this recipe like 20 plus years ago from one of my neighbors, um, and it's, but it's one of my favorites. It's a butternut squash, black bean, chili with a cilantro pesto. Um, it's very heart healthy, it's delicious, and as you'll see, it's quick and easy to make, and you can also freeze it. So what is not to love about it, right? So I'm gonna start first, as you can see, I have all of my ingredients out. Um, this is kind of called mise en place, um, which is a fancy word for making sure that you have everything that you need um, out and ready to go. I like to kind of chop as I go along sometimes, so I don't always necessarily measure everything out, but I pull out all of my ingredients. The other thing that I like to do before I get started is to pull out my garbage can and put it next to me. Um, if you have a dog, uh, like a type like a black lab that likes to get into the garbage, um, maybe you can put like a little sal salad bowl and put your scraps in there. It does kind of make cooking easier and have it go, go by faster than always having to, to run to the garbage can. The last thing I do before I get started too is sometimes I like to take my recipe and uh, here's my little note card that my neighbor wrote out for me all those years ago. Um, and sometimes I just like to take it and post it onto my cabinet so that it's up and out of the way and I'm not gonna get it dirty. Um, so one of the housekeeping things that I forgot to mention is that I do have my, um, laptop open with the chat box. So you won't be able to unmute yourselves, but you can always use a chat box to ask questions, make a comment. I might be asking you guys a question. So that's, that's what you see if you see me looking down. Um, I'm just looking at my computer. So we'll get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is put some oil in my pan. Uh, you could use a canola oil, an avocado oil. I tend to just use extra virgin olive oil for everything. So I'm gonna put in about two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And then I'm gonna put in my onions. So the recipe calls for two large onions to be chopped. I, you know, sometimes it's just one of those days where you don't wanna to have to sit in the kitchen chopping two onions. And that's where a lot of times it's really convenient just to buy them pre-chopped already. Most grocery stores will have them pre-chopped. Um, so if you are going to make the recipe right away, you know, you could certainly buy some pre-chopped onions. Um, so this is equivalent to about two large onions. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put them on my pan and get them started. So onions are going to do two things in terms of our health. My goodness, I hope you can all still hear me. It's pretty loud. <laughs> I always forget how loud that is. But onions contain an antioxidant called quercetin, which helps to boost your immune function. Um, and they, onions also contain a lot of prebiotics. So all these beneficial fiber and, and um, prebiotics for your healthy gut bacteria. All right, thank you for whoever told me that you can hear me fine. I appreciate that because I'm always worried like, oh no, they can't hear me. So yes, so onions will provide some sweetness. They provide that antioxidant called quercetin and they also provide all this inulin for your or prebiotics for your healthy gut bacteria. So don't skimp on the onions. I know some people are sensitive to them. So of course, if you're sensitive to them, just leave them out, um, but they, they do provide not only a lot of good taste, but health benefits as well. So we're going to let these cook for about 10 minutes or so until they're translucent. Um, but because we don't have that much time today, we're going to kind of speed things along. So pretend that 10 minutes have, have gone by. Now I'm going to add in two tablespoons of chili powder and look at that gorgeous red color. 
So that red color, that's all antioxidants. That's all these beneficial phyto compounds that you get from fruits and vegetables and plants. So we'll add in two tablespoons of that. And now I'm also going to add in about half a teaspoon of salt. You can add a little bit more, a little bit less if you like. We'll certainly taste it again to see if it needs some more salt. So I'm just gonna stir that around. And chili is one of those spices that you kind of bring out a lot more of the flavor of the chili peppers um, as you um, heat it up beforehand. So we'll just kind of let that go for about two minutes or so. And then we're going to add in five cloves of garlic. I know, five cloves. Um, so it's a decent amount of garlic, um, but garlic also is really important for heart health. It helps to lower cholesterol levels. Um, it's been used since ancient times, literally since Egyptian times. Apparently there's old Egyptian papyrus rolls that detail all the benefits of garlic. So don't hold back on the garlic, but now, especially as we talk about garlic, one of the nice things about garlic is it does help to support your immune function, specifically against viruses. Um, and I think that's kind of maybe all of our, uh, on all of our minds lately. This is my little garlic roll. Um, you can use a garlic press, you can just chop it up. But this is kind of a fun little um, gadget. One of my... <laughs> One of my interns, I think I made her chop like literally an entire bulb of garlic once. It, it, it may have been even more. We were doing a food demo and um, I remember she, she was a little bit distraught over how much garlic she had to chop. So when she left and she was done with her internship, she bought this for me. So <laughs> I would never have to chop that much garlic again. So this is kind of just kind of a little fun. You can fit in five cloves at one time and just be careful that you don't hurt yourself. It does have some sharp blades on it and then we'll just kind of put that in. Take my fingers and kind of grab the rest of it out. And you know, however you like to do it, you could certainly use a garlic press that would work well. Um, but Hey, if you're out there, I'm still using the, the garlic roll you gave me after all these years. Okay, so we're add in five cloves of garlic and just gonna go ahead and stir that around. Um, and now we'll add in some of our other spices. So this chili has one tablespoon of oregano, which is actually a fair amount of oregano for a chili. Um, a lot of times chilies will use just one teaspoon or two teaspoons, but this uses um, excuse, one whole tablespoon. Does anyone know what oregano is known for? So all spices, contain an amazing amount of antioxidants and nutrition. You know, when we talk about food is medicine, here you go, here's your medicine. Cloves, cumin, oregano, and chili powder. They are so concentrated in terms of the amount of these plant chemicals that pr protect the plant, but when we eat them, they also help us too. Um, so I'm seeing one answer here and someone says antibacterial and you are absolutely correct. So some spices are especially known for having a lot of what we call antimicrobial properties. So they help to kill bacteria, viruses. Um, two of them stand out, specifically oregano as well as thyme. So thyme and oregano are really some strong antibacterial bacterials. Uh, and then we have cloves, which is kind of unusual, right? It's not a lot of chili recipes call for cloves. You're only going to use a quarter teaspoon of cloves here. Um, cloves are famous for a couple things too. Does anyone know what cloves are famous for? You can put that in the chat box. But, you know, all these little spices have medicine in them. So if anybody you know what cloves are good for, let me know. And then lastly, cumin. So cumin 
you know, when you smoke cumin, it doesn't, I don't think it smells all that great, but man, you add it to a recipe and it makes so many things taste so much better. Um, it's used a lot in, of course, Southwest type of cooking, um, but also used in, you know, all pretty much all over the world, India, the Middle East, um, so many countries use that cumin seed. So I have one tablespoon of cumin as well that I'm gonna throw in there. Um, I see we have somebody else who loves cumin. Uh, so cloves, yes, cloves are anti-inflammatory, but one of the main things that cloves are known, actually they're known for two things. They're known for being the, having the most in test tubes, the most antioxidants out of any plant. Um, so they are incredibly powerful in terms of the amount of antioxidants. The other thing they're known for is helping to um, prevent tooth aches. So people used to take a clove, like the whole, little, the whole clove, not the ground clove, and they would put it in their tooth if they had a toothache because it, it works as somewhat of an analgesic as well. Um, so I'm gonna stir that around. And now I'm going to add in my tomatoes. So we've got two cans of tomatoes. Uh, actually, we should have two cans of the 28 ounce, um, but I've got one can of the crushed and one can, pretend this is 28 ounces, and one can of just the 14 ounce fire roasted diced tomatoes. Um, so I'm gonna add those in. And don't drain these, make sure you add in all the liquid as well. And now with my crushed tomatoes, I usually like to add a little bit of water to it. So add a tiny bit of water, swirl it around, get everything out of there. You know, food's getting really expensive. You don't want to necessarily waste anything. Um, my mother would take a spatula and get out every last little inch of there, but you know, throw some water in there and call it good. Um, and so basically what we're looking for is to have enough water in there that, so that we can submerge our butternut squash. So we're going to be adding in four cups of butternut squash. Um, so butternut squash, you can take this big, huge butternut squash and chop it up. And the benefit of, of doing it that way is that this will last on your counter, unrefrigerated for, I would say a good two to three weeks. At the beginning of the pandemic, when no one wanted to go grocery shopping, I was stocking up on these and just keeping them on my counter so that I always had some sort of vegetable handy. So that's the benefit of that. But I got to tell you, it's really nice to buy it peeled and cut, right? So one of these is about four cups, um, which is the amount that's called for. Now, the kind of drawback of using this is the fact that this does not last all that long. This says that it's good until March 5th. I think I saw somewhere on the label, um, but it already kind of felt like it was already getting, you know, maybe a little, little old to me. Um, so with, with the butternut squash, you kind of want it in bite-sized pieces. Some of these pieces are a little bit big. So I'm just gonna take my knife and maybe cut some of the big, bigger pieces into smaller bite-sized pieces. And that'll help to kind of bring it along in terms of cooking it as well. So, you know, maybe, and you, certainly they can be whatever size you want. We're looking for about, you know, maybe that big. So let's throw those in there. And yeah, I could, I could sit here all day and cut these in the exact same size piece, but you know, we don't have all day. So I'm gonna throw those in. So I'll throw my butternut squash in, and this is gonna take about 20 minutes to cook. Um, so we'll, we're gonna leave that cook and then we'll make our cilantro. But two things, another thing that I forgot to tell you about was bay leaves have here some bay leaves. These are from Turkey. Um, they're used a lot in the Mediterranean. They're a big part of Mediterranean cooking. And they, of course, like any other spice, also have some health benefits to them. So I'm going to take two bay leaves and throw them in. Um, bay leaves are nice. They're one of these spices that are really not all that expensive. So 
I like to go to Penzi's. I live in Arlington, so we've got Penzi's Spices. If you get a chance, it's a fun little store to go to, and they have a really, really high quality spices. So I just buy the big thing. Um, you use so many of these, like soups and stews and chili. Um, so with the bay leaves, you do want to make sure that you pull them out before you before you serve it. So, okay. So that's all kind of nicely submerged. I'm just gonna let that simmer for about 20 minutes and get that um, butternut squash cooking. <coughs> so meanwhile, while that's cooking, let me just see if there's any um, other questions here. Um, okay, so we will send out the recipe. Um, the pot is on high heat now because it's one of these electric burners. And what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to bring it up to a simmer. And once it starts simmering, I'm gonna turn it down um, because you don't necessarily wanna boil it because then you lose a lot of liquid. So I'm just gonna turn it down to kind of low and um, you know boil it that way. Now, somebody asked about peeling the squash. There's a lot of different ways that you can do it. Number one is you want to take your chef's knife um, and just be really, really careful with it. So then you can take your chef's knife and just peel it like this. Um, I find that's the easiest way to do it rather than using a vegetable peeler because it is pretty hard. So you just do that. And then of course, you'll see inside as well that has some seeds, just take your spoon and get these seeds out as well. Um, but like I said, it does make it really easy when you've got the peeled, the pre-cut squash. Okay, so we'll put this off to the side. Um, and I can hear, I can hear that this is kind of simmering away. So it's at a good temperature. And we're gonna make our cilantro pesto. So the cilantro pesto um, is really kind of unique. There's not a lot of other recipes I've seen for cilantro pesto. It's basically like making a basil pesto. Um, there's, if you ever made French soups, sometimes a lot of French soups will, will make um, a basil type of pesto to put on top of the soup. So this is kind of along those same lines. So I'm gonna get my food processor out. You could also use a blender. Um, I'm gonna use the food processor and we're gonna take one bunch of cilantro. Like that's a lot of cilantro, right? This was a really, really, really large bunch. So I've soaked the cilantro um, and then I put it in my spinner, my herb spinner and I spin it dry. Cilantro has a lot of grit in it. So typically when you get it in a supermarket, you always wanna make sure that you're washing it to get all that grit out. Uh, so, which is what I've done. Sometimes when I buy it in Trader Joe's, it comes in a bag already pre-washed, that's fine. Um, so I'm probably not gonna use this whole bunch because that's, that's a, you can see how much is left there. It was a really big bunch. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of put that in there. Um, and I'm not gonna worry about the stems. So, you know, you could sit there and take all the stems off. You could cut them off if you wanted to, but they add flavor and um, in, in the pesto, you're really not even gonna tell the difference in, in texture. Um, so here is the, um, so we've got one bunch of cilantro. Now we're also going to add in two garlic cloves again. So we've got two cloves of garlic. We're gonna add in a little bit of salt. So about a half teaspoon of salt or so, a little bit of pepper, pepper half teaspoon of pepper. And then we're going to, um, um, one third cup of walnuts. Does anybody know, uh, so these, you can see that they're in a pan. And I toasted these on the stove for about 30 minutes or so, or 30 minutes, three minutes um, on low, medium heat. 
but you want to keep an eye on walnuts. They, they do kind of burn very easily and then you got to throw them out and start all over again. So toast them so they're lightly toasted about three minutes. These would be also what you would add to like a regular basil, basil pesto. And so we got our garlic, all of that. And then with the food processor running, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and I'm gonna add in one third cup of extra virgin olive oil. So let's see, uh, does toast, oh, somebody asked, is the toasting for uh, health benefits or is it for added flavor? Excellent question. It's actually for added flavor. Sometimes walnuts have a little bit of a, an astringent quality to them, I guess maybe would be for lack of a better word. Um, and so when you toast them, you kind of make the, you bring out the nuttiness and, um, and they just taste better. So um, I'm gonna add in a tiny bit of my olive oil here. So here's, here's a question for everybody. And then I'm just going to take my spatula and push it down. And you know, this looks, I might add in a little bit more olive oil too, because this was a fairly big bunch of cilantro. Um, so I'm just going to add it another little splash of olive oil just to make sure that it's in the consistency that I want. We've got our pesto now. So I'm gonna pull out my spoon and just take a little. Mm. I love cilantro. I know not everybody does. It is actually a um, genetic thing. Some people think it tastes like soap. And actually there's a good reason for that. There's actually a compounds in cilantro called aldehydes that are similar to the compounds that you would find in soap. So that makes sense, right? Um, but cilantro has so many health benefits to it. When we talk about food as medicine, once again, cilantro is one of these superstars. It uh, helps to decrease blood pressure, decrease cholesterol. It helps um, lower blood sugar levels. But one of the unique things about cilantro that it has is that some studies suggest that it can help your liver to detoxify, specifically lead. So, um, you know, there's all these kind of detox diets out there that, you know, as a dietitian, I kind of question sometimes, but there is some, some decent research behind the cilantro um, helping and assisting your liver in detoxification. So that is kind of one of the nice things with cilantro. Okay, so now we'll take our corn. We've got two cups of corn here. So we're just gonna finish off our chili so that I can serve it and show you what it looks like in the bowl. So the recipe calls for fresh corn, for three ears of fresh corn or for two cups of of um, corn off the cob. So this is really kind of a nice fall recipe because at this time of year, you're not getting fresh corn together with butternut squash. Um, but in the fall, you can go to the farmer's market and you can get corn and butternut squash at the same time for like, you know, maybe two or three weeks. But so what do we do? We use frozen corn. So this is two cups of frozen corn that I'm going to go in, in and add to my chili. And then two cups of black beans. So this is about two cans of black beans. I did have some black beans left over that my son will probably use and make a quesadilla, quesadilla with later. Um, so if you don't want black beans sitting around in your fridge, just put the two cans in. Um, you know, when you're cooking, you don't need to follow recipes exactly, you know, 
the way that they're written. If you have them a little more, a little less, it's okay. When you're baking, yes, you do want to do that because baking is more of a chemical reaction um, where this, you know, you don't need to be so strict. Um, but I know some of you out there are going to want to follow things exactly the way the recipe says, and that is absolutely fine too. Um, my husband, whenever he makes a recipe, he makes it exactly the way that it's written because, you know, why would they bother to write it any other way? So, um, you know, do what works for you. I always think of recipes as suggestions. So here I'm seeing somebody ask, did you drain the beans? Yes, I did. I drained and I rinsed the beans. You don't, you know, you don't necessarily have to rinse the beans. You're, you're rinsing out some of the extra starch that's in there. Um, if beans make you a little gassy, you definitely want to make sure that you're rinsing out all that, that extra starch in there. Um, you're also making them a little bit lower sodium. But you know, with, with this, we have so many vegetables in it. We wanna make sure that we do have some salt in it. And I'm actually gonna taste it now to see where we are salt wise. Um, we added about a half teaspoon of salt at the beginning. The tomatoes and beans will add some salt, but so I would say I, I'm going to add a little bit more salt for my taste. Um, and you know, we don't need a ton. The the tomatoes and the onions will give it some a little bit of sweetness. But what salt does is it just helps to balance out the flavors. And if you're eating a whole real foods diet and you're not eating processed food, chances are you know that you're not getting that much salt to begin with. So um, I do like to make sure that you know when I have a recipe that has the right amount of salt and different people have different tastes in terms of what works for them. So always start on the lower end and then add, add more as needed. Okay. Because we are just about running out of time, um, I'm gonna show you what this looks like plated. Um, so pretend that this cooked for about another 20 minutes or so and simmered. You might need a little bit more depending on the size of your um, butternut squash. So if you cut butternut squash bigger, you know you might need a good half an hour for that to soften up. Um, but here, I'll give you the, the idea of what it looks like. So isn't that beautiful? And then we take our, our pesto and put a little bit of that on top. And there is your 100% plant-based butternut squash chili with pesto. Uh, you can also put a little bit of sour cream on there. I usually serve this with a little bit of sour cream on top as well which would also be lovely or, or not, just the way it is. So, and the nice thing about this is that you can freeze the soup and, or the, the chili, and you can freeze the pesto. The pesto is not gonna last all that long in the fridge. It'll last a couple days, but what I'm probably going to do is I'm gonna put it in, um, I have these little silicon ice cube trays. I'll put it in the ice cube tray so that, um, and then I'll throw it in the freezer. Because, you know, you went through all that work of making it, you wanna make sure that, that you have it. So I'll either use it on chilies, um, you could make burrito bowls, put it inside of a burrito bowl, you could put it inside of a wrap. Um, if you made some Indian food, this would be really good on top of a curry. So lots of really yummy things that, that you can make with, with this. Um, so we're just almost out of time. Uh, any questions, comments? Thank you so much all for everyone for your participation. It's fun to see um, everyone's participation and questions, and, and I appreciate that. But thank you all so much for joining me here today, and um, go to YouTube to get the, the recipe. Thank you. Bye, everyone.